iconic, historic Hampton House. Stay tuned. Thank you so much, viewers, for joining me today. Did you all miss me? Well, guess what? I did miss you. Happy New Year. We are in a new year, 2022. It's a pleasure to be back with you. Today, I am coming from the most iconic place in the city of Miami. And that is the historic Hampton House. Yes. We're coming from the historic Hampton House, and it, it is already my pleasure to be here. I have two great, wonderful women I will be interviewing today, and I cannot wait for you to hear their story. Thank you so much. Let me pause and go into a word of prayer. Like I often do, you know, if you've been following me, we open up with a word of prayer. Go ahead and bow with me. Heavenly Father God, we come before you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, thanking you for this day, thanking you for this interview. Lord, I invoke your presence right now. We thank you. Have your way, Lord God. I thank you for the two women that will be sharing their history here, Lord God, and, and especially about the Hampton House, the historic Hampton House must not forget historic. It is so important to know our history. So Lord, I thank you for this time of sharing. Bless the interview and bless the viewers that will come on and let them share this. Giving you all honor, glory, praise, and reverence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now you all know I love to pray if you've been following me, so I have to kind of just table back on praying, but prayer is always in order. So let's get back to the royal class. What we're here about today is the historic Hampton House interview with the most amazing women of all. I have an honor and a privilege to interview Dr. Enid C. Pigney and Dr. Mary Hyder. Let me share a little bit of their history with you. Dr. Enid Curtis Pigney was born in Miami, Florida, in Overtown, a Bahamian parentage, and graduated from Booker T. Washington High School in 1949. She received a BA degree from Talladega College, Talladega, Alabama, in social science, an MS degree from Barry University, Miami, Florida, in guidance and counseling, and an honorary doctorate degree in humane letters from St. Thomas University, Miami, Florida. She also received an honorary doctorate degree in humane letters from Talladega College and Florida International University in Miami, Florida. She produced a television program, Resurrection, Blacks Buried in the City Cemetery for Channel 35 and a 12-part series on historical perspectives of Brownsville for Channel 17. And more recently, she appeared in a documentary about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his visit to Miami, Florida by WLRN and directed by Mia Lorenzo. She produced a documentary on the, where we're at today, the historic Hampton House that has been shown by WLRN. She has served as the first African-American president of both Dade Heritage Trust and Natives of Dade. She led the community in saving the Miami Circle from demolition while president of Dade Heritage Trust. She was founding president CEO of the historic Hampton House Community Trust, Inc where she saved the historic Hampton House Motel from demolition 
by Miami-Dade County and persuaded Miami-Dade County to buy the building to restore it. Listen, there's so much history. This is just touching, barely scratching the surface on Dr. Pinckney. She has so much. You would have to literally Google her to find out all her history. She will be speaking real shortly. I also have the awesome privilege moving into sharing with you of our next guest, which is who is, not which is, who is Dr. Hi, Dr. Mary Heiler. I have to get that correct. Dr. Mary Heiler. I am opening up with saying she is a vocalist, consultant, teacher, and trainer. Dr. Heiler have a PhD, higher education, administration from Yellow Springs, Ohio, Ohio, get my words right, Master of Science Elementary Secondary School at Administration, FIU Miami, a Bachelor of Science Elementary Education, Tuskegee Institute University, Tuskegee, Alabama. Dr. Heyer is also, Dr. Heiler is also a graduate of Booker T. Um, Washington, I believe. I prayerfully, I'm saying that she is a graduate of Booker T. Washington. Dr. Heiler is program director for the Community Rightful Center, a social service agency that helps clients with providing them programs and services for the undeserved population in Miami-Dade and Broward counties. Dr. Heiler is also trainer, teacher, educational consultant, manage quality of cross-functional development programs from initiation through release. Also, Dr. Heiler, Association of the Haitian American Community, Assistant Director, Miami, Florida, Dade County Public Schools System, Assistant Principal for Community Public Schools, Miami, Dade, Florida. Dr. Heiler have a great love for educating our children. And also, Dr. Heiler is a former performer from the historic Hampton House, Dr. Enid Pinckney and Dr. Mary Heiler. Thank you so much for joining us today. Listen, I am so excited that you are here to join us today, Dr. Pinckney. Please share just a little bit about you. I shared just a little teaser, but share a little bit about you. Tell us. Well, I think you did a very good job of sharing about me. Um, I think that most people know that I'm a Miamian, and I am interested in historic preservation. Yes. And so I have worked with the Lemon City Cemetery Community Cooperation and preserving the Lemon City Cemetery, which yes. the city of Miami was going to have developers put three affordable housing units on the a black abandoned cemetery um, in Miami. And I said, that cannot be. Mm -hmm. We have to respect the dead. Yes. So that was a battle. And we now have a memorial garden there. Yes. Yeah, well. And a monument with 523 names wow. of black people who were buried in that cemetery. And they were going to put apartments My. on the property. Wow. So that was another battle that um, I was in. And with historic preservation yes. and respecting our people. So I think it's very important for us to know our history. Yes, it is. And to preserve it and to share it with the young people. Yes. To help the young people to understand the shoulders upon which they stand. Yes. So that they can be proud of their heritage. And so I'm very happy to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And whatever I can do to help you in your program and what you're doing, I'll be happy to do it. Thank you so much. I definitely want to bring light to the historic Hampton House, which I was so intrigued finding out myself the lack of knowledge, lack of awareness that I had about the Hampton House. 
So just doing my research to for this interview has brought so much awareness to me of the history that is behind that the Hampton House, the historic Hampton House, and we cannot leave out the historic that is so important and the work that you have committed to um, to restoring the ha the historic Hampton House. And so share a little bit about your um, your family. Are you a only child or you have any siblings or? Well, I had three brothers uh -huh. and two sisters. Yes. And I, but I'm the only one left. Wow. My parents are gone and all of my sisters and brothers are gone. So I'm the only one that's left. Yeah. And uh, I'm doing work now on my genealogy. Okay. And I'm hoping, I have started the Curtis Foundation, which is uh, a pop, my parents' name, my maiden name okay. was Curtis. Okay. So I've started the uh, Curtis Foundation in which I hope to help to encourage other people to become involved in understanding who they are, yes. where they came from, yes. and in preserving their history and learning about the history. Because as you said, a lot of people right here in Miami just don't know yes. about this place. Wow. I came here when it was in its glory days. Wow. Can't wait to get and, to the uh, <clears throat> After integration and we could go anywhere we wanted to go, yes. uh, we stopped coming to the Hampton House and it became a derelict building. Mm -hmm. So the, the drug addicts and the homeless people took over uh, the Hampton House. Wow. And so the neighbors wanted the Hampton House torn down. And it was a long time that we just sat back and saw this building oh, wow. deteriorate. A, a lady by the name of Kathy Hirsch came to me, uh -huh. who happened to be a white lady. Yes. She came to me and said that she heard that Dr. Martin Luther King had said the I Have a Dream speech here at the Hampton House before he said it in Washington, D.C. And then she talked about the people that she heard who used to come here, like Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. Jackie wow. Robinson, yes, the Nancy Wilson, you know, you name all these celebrities, and they used to come to the Hampton House. Wow. And she wanted to know if there's a group that would sponsor historic designation for the Hampton House. Yes. And um, I wasn't too interested, really, at that time. Yes. And, but I was head of the African American Committee of Dade Heritage Trust. Yes. And I said I would talk to them and see if they would be interested. Well, she came to the meeting. I invited her to come to the meeting. She came with three movies about the Hampton House. Wow. And they decided that they would sponsor the historic designation. Mm -hmm. um, we just thought, that would be a good thing to do. Absolutely. But we, we, we found out that the county was going to tear it down. Mm -hmm. So we had to stop our effort with that to try to stop the county from tearing it down. down. A great piece and of And so um, we worked on that. We worked with, uh, at the time, Mayor Pinellas was the mayor, and his brother was a historic preservationist, so we appealed to him to appeal to his brother. Yes. And so we had a big meeting right out there in the front, a press conference, mm -hmm. and we asked the mayor to help us save the Hampton yes. House from demolition. Wow. And he said that if we could spend $26 billion on saving the circle, which I had uh, part in saving that also, yes. then we could spend some money in saving a piece of black history. Absolutely. So we supported it and 
and we continue to work with him and also the commissioner at that time was Barbara Carey. Yes. So we worked with both of them and the county bought the building for $450,000. Wow. And, and we just, um, but then we needed money to restore it. And we didn't, none of us had any money. Mm -hmm. So we just had an idea. Idea that went for us. I want to bring in Dr. Heiler. She was one of the first performers or the youngest performer here at the historic Hampton House. And Dr. Heider, um, welcome. Thank you so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me and um, sharing the platform with uh, Enid. I mean, she's just like a mom to me. So anything she wants me to do and you want me to do, I'm more than happy to do. Oh, thank you so much for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. But share a little bit about you, Dr. Heider. Well, I'm a true educator. Okay. I returned back to teaching, which is my forte. Okay. Um, I'm at the uh, School of Excellence, okay. South Florida School of Excellence, and we have a very diverse uh, faculty, administration, um, student body. It's one of the most well-rounded programs I've ever been in in my educational life, and I've been in education for 44 years. Some and this time. is my 44th year this year. Uh, I'm an overtowner for life, just like me. <laughs> I'm from Overtown. Um, there's many things that Ian and I have in common. Um, she's the last of her siblings, and mm -hmm. I'm the last of my two siblings. My, wow. my mother, father, sister, and brother are all gone, and I'm here by myself as well. Wow. So, I mean, we have a lot of things in common. Um, of course, I have nieces and nephews, but it's nothing like having that core from the very beginning. Yes. Um, and now being the matriarch of the family, it puts a whole lot of a different light on my life now because they look up to me to make some decisions for them, for the family. Um, I went to school at Phyllis Wheatley. Okay. My brother was on faculty, so I couldn't get away with anything. <laughs> um, then I went on to Booker Washington. Mm -hmm. Then I received a scholarship to send me to Tuskegee, which Ian went to Talladega, yes. which is right up the street from wow, Tuskegee okay. in Alabama. So I'm telling you, we have a lot of connection yes. here. Um, so I went on to Tuskegee and I graduated in 1968 with a Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education. And from there, I came home and my brother said to me, sis, listen, you got it, use it. Um, I need you to continue your education. He said, man, look here, I'm tired. Uh, he said, no, <clears throat> I want you to go and get your your um, master's. Yeah. So I was in the first graduating class of, uh, I made history again, wow. first graduating class of Florida International University. Okay. I got my master's um, there. And then when I got through with that, he said to me, my brother was something else. She should know. <laughs> he was really good friends of England. Uh -huh. <laughs> He said to me, now I need you to go back and get your PhD. Well, along with Dr. Uh, the, the superintendent at the time, Dr. Johnny Jones, mm -hmm. I came to me, Johnny came to me and said, listen, go back and get your doctorate and I'll make sure that you have a position in the district um, as an administrator. I went back and got the doctorate. When I returned from Ohio, um, I was put at Pontiana Park to uh, uplift that community. That's what it was. It was more uplifting to them. It, people had written them off and I'm just like, she's into preservation. Yes. I'm into helping people get to where they need to go. Yes. And so, so I was brought in for the purpose of making that community feel important, making sure that their voice is heard downtown. Yes. Um, and, and that was my job. And so I developed this, this big program at the Pontiana for the community, which enhanced 158 students in the marching band. Wow. I created a band, and they played these little plastic flutes. Um, they call them recorders or something like that. And uh, because I have a musical background in education, um, um, I, I just took it, and the music was the thing that brought that community together. 
people that sat on committees uh, for the school had never been downtown to the Eiffel Tower at all. They had no knowledge of what to say or what to do, but they became leaders in their community and people respected them. Mm -hmm. We formed organizational uh, committees and different things. Yes. Um, but it, 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 it's like, She's helping the community in one way, and I'm helping the community yes, in another are. way. And both of it comes together. Yes. And and that's what this thing is all about, the dream. Yes. The dream of Dr. King. Yes. You're sitting in the room right next right to Dr. Next King. To, yes. uh, where he wrote the I Have a Dream Jesus. speech. So powerful. Um, and today is an okay day. Yes. And th that is historical to yes, me. It I is. mean, this whole thing, I mean, it's, it's coming to... The full circle. Yes, it is. So I'm I'm happy to be here today to express my gratitude to Enid for helping out the community in one way, and I'm hoping that she appreciates what I do for the community in another way. Yes. yes. Um, I can never say no to this. Lady. I have of course tried. not. <laughs> I have tried to say no. I'm sitting on her committee. I've tried to get off of the board of directors for the Hampton House, and. Um, that's a no for her. Uh, anything she needs, I have to respond to because I know what she's all about. Yes. And that's very important, um, helping each other. That keeping is the dream alive. alive. And that's key, keeping the dream alive in the young people for them to know their history. And not just the young people. For, for instance, I think I shared already, I myself did not know so much about the Hampton House. So when I begin to do my Homework, yes, homework <laughs> on the Hampton House preparing for this interview. I was blown away by even when I when I visited here, it was like, oh my God, I was just like overwhelmed with with the the mind of this is the room where actually where Dr. King wrote his parts of his speech that you know, I have a dream speech. So I just felt like this is history. I'm standing in history. And I remember being a child, young, um, five years old, my first exposure to the Dr. Dream, um, I think it was a documentary on Dr. King. I was in tears, not knowing at the time what it was about, but of course I know today, to know that he was here in this historic Hampton house mean a lot to me. And for your work to restore this place is such a great legacy that needs to be told over and over and over. It should never die. This should be in history books. And people need to know about this historic Hampton House and the work that Dr. Pinckney has done and has, continues to do in her wonderful years to do here. She labors to bring awareness and attention um, to this historic Hampton House. And Dr. Heiler, who's performed here as a young woman, young lady, um, to share this. So not only just Dr. King, but people, the history that's here is just beyond words. I'm out of words to use to describe the history that's attached to, to this historic Hampton House. You had great names come through here. Matter of fact, the movie, um, brought some awareness very it brought some awareness with regina king directed uh, a movie now really need to be made from these ladies lives um but the one night in miami featuring the hampton house which was monumental this can never be forgotten where muhammad ali of course beat sonny liston here but you had malcolm x and you had sam cook and you had um, Jim Brown, who is still with us, football player. Okay, I play. I, I know a lot about football. <laughs> My kids play football, and I think I'm missing one more. Um, um, I'm missing one. Yeah. Sam Cook, Jim Brown, Malcolm X, and Muhammad Ali. Yeah. And before he changed his name to Muhammad Ali, he did that the night that he was here at the Hampton House, right. he declaring he would be a Muslim right. um, while he was here that night. Right. And and there was so much history here. And tell us the grace that came through here. And why do you this? I know why it needs to be preserved, and you need to know about the history attached to this place. And why, why, when you're um, writing or preparing your vacation trips, people, staycations, listen, this is the place to come and visit. Come to know the history that is here in this historic Hampton House and see the pictures and see where the pool where 
at that time, only blacks can swim in the pool here during the summer times. It was open to them. So please share. It's, you're telling me history here, so do tell us. Well, you know, uh, I'm glad that you brought up about uh, Mary being one of the artists here. Yes. I, I think she was, what, about 16? 15. 15. 15 years ago. And wow. so when I had my 90th birthday yes. in October. Happy birthday. <laughs> I insisted that she sing for me because I wanted to, the history, I wanted to have a part of that history. Yes. And when she started, I said, no, you're not backing out of this. Yes. I want you to be there because you are the artist. And, you know, you don't have too many of those persons who used to perform here yes. still alive. Yes. And so I'm, I was blessed Praise to, God. to know that she's still here. And I wanted people to hear her. I wanted people to know what kind of entertainment used to be a part of this Hampton House. Yes. But as you talk about um, the history, I want people to also know that this building served as a place for core to me, core at its monthly meetings right here mm -hmm. at the Hampton House. Okay. And this is where they plan the strategies for the segregation of downtown Miami, mm -hmm. of the sit-ins that yes. they had at Grants and Cressus and the stores down yes. there. How they were how they were going to fight bite off the the the, the Violence, if there was strategies, they planned them right here. Mm -hmm. And then they went out and carried them out. Wow. And, you know, I want people to know that this was not just an inter a place of entertainment. Yes. But this is a place where people work for civil rights okay. yes. in this community. And that. The reason that there weren't as much violence as other places is because they were working with Dr. King. Dr. Yes. King, we have Dr. King on a video uh, talking about when the Cubans were coming in. And he, was, he said that he hoped that as they come in, this would not mean that it would affect jobs for for black people. Yes. And that they would just black people would just be relegated to menial jobs. And we have that on a DVD that he made right here at the Hampton House. Mm -hmm. So th there is so much history, history that we have preserved. Yes that we need to share. We need, we, we just need to share with the community and share with our young people. Yes. Because I think that if the young people could learn how to have pride in themselves yes. and in their history, then they will uh, try to achieve Yes. at a higher level. And so that's one of the things that we still have to work on. We still have to work on reaching out to the community so important. and bringing the community into the Hampton House Yes, and having programs, mm -hmm. educational and cultural programs. Yes. We're lacking in that right now. So we need to have programs to bring people into the Hampton House, yes. to educate them in the cultural arts, in the humanities, as well as giving them the history yes. of this building and 
what it has meant to us, to the people who, who were here and who laid the foundation upon which we stand. Yes. So this is what I'm hoping that we will get to yes. and that this, this place will be alive. Yes. We, we've got to bring some life into the building. Yes. Now we, we've struggled to get the money over ten million dollars mm -hmm. to restore it. Yes. Now we've got to bring programs in here to benefit the community and benefit people. Yes. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And About developing it more, developing children, yes. the community, the yes. people. Because how do you have a strong community? You got to have a foundation for the children, a strong foundation. Places for them to come and to right. learn, you know, because all of them, they don't want to be on the street. They just yeah. need a place to they be. Need, right. I want them to they study. They need fine music. arts. I want them to study music. Yes, they need fine and, arts. And, and on, on that same note, <clears throat> when you talk about music, music is a universal language. It is. And it, it, it covers so many different areas. But what we haven't talked about also in it is how these artists got into the Hampton House because so many of them were performing on Miami Beach, yes. but they could not live on Miami Beach. Mm -hmm. So they would venture back over here to live yes. uh, because they were not allowed to live in those hotels on Miami Beach, although they were performers. Um, so they came back over here and at any given time, if, if Count Basie had his orchestra performing on Miami Beach, but they didn't live there. He'd come over here, but then he would come into the lounge here and he would begin to just play. play. And Duke Ellington did the same thing. I mean, so many artists I've met, uh, they just venture in and you, that it would be a whole show that nobody even knew that the show was going to be here mm -hmm. until they came in and said, Let's do this. It was like a jam session. Yeah. Everybody um, got to do something. Uh -huh. You know, it was it was a camaraderie yeah. with people, the gathering. That's where we used to dress up. Mm -hmm. I mean, to come into Hampton House, uh, <clears throat> there was no sagging pants. I mean, everybody was necktied down, mm -hmm. coat down. I mean, this was the place to be. Uh, the Hampton House was. When I thought when when I became a singer in this place, see, I thought I had reached the height. You know, I really did. Yes. You know, I had performed all over town, but when I was invited to finally go to the Hampton House as a young girl, then I finally saw what my brother and my sister had been telling me. It's a different atmosphere. Mm -hmm. These people had a lot of culture, yes. a lot of class when they came to the Hampton mm -hmm. House. And that's the kind of respect that we want to see our boys and girls grow up to, yes. to have, but not the sagging pants. Not none of that. They need to be exposed to the finer things in life so that I they agree. too can have a place in society. I agree. Yes. I think I read a quote, Dr. Um, Pinkney, that you had where this was the socialite place. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, back yes. in the day, this was the place right. to be, you know, right. like you said, class and right. I mean, dress up oh, time. Yeah. And oh, I yeah. love dress up. Oh, yeah. So, you know, oh, yeah. had I been there, I would have been yes. there. Right? Yes, yes. Well, Mary said something that I want to piggyback on. Yes. This is the place where white people came because what they found out, and several of them have told me, Harvey Rubin used to come in here, mm -hmm. the, the, the county clerk. Yes, yes, yeah. county clerk. Um, Howard Kleinberg used to come here. These people, there's uh, so many people told me that I used to go to the Hampton House. Mm -hmm. And what, what they found out was, they went to Miami Beach yes. to the show where they paid a whole lot of money to see these entertainers perform. But what Mary was saying about how when they came over here, it was a different vibe. They relaxed, yes, and they had a good a time. time. <laughs> so, so many of of the white people said that they could save their money and come over to the Hampton House <laughs> <laughs> and see a better show mm -hmm. than they saw 
when they were on Miami Beach. Wow. And so this was a place for integration mm -hmm. during the days of segregation wow. because well, they together. were welcome yeah. to come to the Hampton House. And so, you know, this is the kind of history that we need to share with everybody. Yeah. That, that uh, the Hampton House was integrating Miami during the days of segregation. Mm, powerful. Yes. Powerful. And that's a great thing. Um, Our colleges people. and university, their teams, Florida and m the HBC schools would also live here um, when they came to perform for the golf tournament or for the track teams. Yes. Or, um, even the tennis stars were here. Oh, yes. 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 So it was a lot of history. Yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot as a young girl, and I was ready to go off to an HBC school to to expand that knowledge. And that's exactly what what happened to me. That's why I'm so fond of Black history. Yeah. And um, I, I I teach it every day. History cannot be taught just one month out of no, the year. No, it can. It has to be taught. Every day. Every day, year round. And we have to make our kids feel proud of who they are and where they've come from. Yes, I like agree. Like you said, on the shoulders of which they stand. They on. are. It's important. I remember, um, just th thinking back, I think it was, um, oh my goodness, Ro, not Ro, um, oh, was it Edgar, Me Edgar Mevers? Um, yeah, Medgar. Medgar, I'm going to see his name wrong, forgive me. <clears throat> and I remember reading just like some of the history behind some what happened um and I, board of education i think it was you know ground for education so i was like when i even when I, I i i was introduced to that i was at a restaurant and i'm not even gonna name the restaurant and and i had a white gentleman ask me a question reference medgar evers i didn't know who he was I went to look him up to see what it was about. So history is important. I say that to say, bringing, tying it into history is important. And he asked me a question in a restaurant. He just threw this question out. I was naive to what he, who he was talking about. So when you mention some names and the history and, and the foundation of the children needed to know who they, the, 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 the foundation that they stand on, they need to know where they come from, what happened, who is this person? And if they know where they came from, then they know the direction that they need to go. Exactly, and where not to go, too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> to keep them focused. Yes. No, you don't know. Okay. Yes, it is so important. Yes. And this is one of the, um, the, the Hampton, the historic Hampton House is one of the, the last buildings um, during segregation time. Yes, friend. that's, you know, it's still, still existing. existing. Because See, we had um, we had the Mary Elizabeth Hotel. Mm -hmm. Sir John. We had the Sir John Hotel. And we had the, we had the Cabo Hotel. Yes. And they're caught. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're caught. And wow. so that was another reason yes. that I felt that we needed to have something from the days of segregation. Yes. Right? that we could look at yes. and see what we had back then mm -hmm. because this is a treasure. It is. It truly is. And we have to respect our history enough to fight for it. Yes. And we have to let people know that, that we're willing to make the sacrifice because when I first started with this, people were saying, oh, you know, they need to tear that building down because of the way it looked. Mm, don't go by what everything, how things look all the time, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Well, not yes. only do we have not, we don't even have those hotels that you just mentioned. We don't even have the clubs that were back in the day. I mean, besides the historic Hampton House, uh, being one of the focal points for entertainment. We had so many, in our community over town alone, you had so many different 
Kill up society. society. Yes, you had. If you start, if you start, twenty street, twenty street, 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 and if you come, and I worked at all of them uh -huh. as a young kid. Wow. As a young kid, um, it took me to all of these clubs. If you start at twenty street, third avenue, and come straight oh, down, wow. and you go down to uh, six six street. On the corner of Sixth Street was the Sir John Hotel. It used to be called the Lord Cabaret. And then you go a little east to Second Avenue and turn the corner. You had the Mary Elizabeth sitting to the left. You had Smalls across the street. Mm -hmm. um, down the street from that, you go to Tenth Street and Second. I can remember all of this Tenth wow. Street, Second mm -hmm. Avenue. That was the Hollow Square. Okay. Yeah, the yes. Hollow Square. Yes. And one of the famous men that used to manage it, by the majority of these uh, clubs was Clyde Killen. Clyde Killen. Back in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bobby Marchand was the uh, MC. Mm -hmm. um, when you saw, and they put a show together that was really incredible. Um, and I said, one day I'm going to be up on that stage. Okay. One day I'm going to be up on that stage. And sure enough, I mean, you, even when we had the the Tiki Club in, in, in um, Coconut Grove. Grove. Yeah, in Coconut Grove. And then you um, had, uh, what you call it, the Continental Club on 7th Avenue and 60th Street, right down the street from Friendship. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you, you had so many, um, and these people used to dress. Yeah. But it was nothing like dressing to come. It was a different kind of dressing to come to the Hampton House. Mm -hmm. You had a different, it was a different, different class. It, yes. It was elegance. Yes. 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 yes, it was. It was pure <laughs> elegance of, the, yeah. of this place here. So, I mean, I, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot from people like Enid. Yes. To keep my head up high and to do what I need to do and, and, and help people. Wow. So much. So, people, you have to come to this historic Hampton House. We could be here. I couldn't even put a time limit on it, talking about the history that's attached to this historic Hampton House. You have to come and tour the place. Tell them how they can come and tour the Hampton House. Well, they can come. Uh, we do have tours. They can uh, call the Hampton House, make an appointment mm -hmm. uh, to come and to make a tour and see the historic pictures that we have yes. here and um, see Dr. King and, 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 uh, and his swimming trunks in the pool that yes. we have there. <laughs> yes. Also, um, here at the Hampton House, because I did sit on the board of directors, Yes. Um, you can rent the place for different parties okay. and conferences and social events. I mean, this is the place to have your your, your, your yes. Yes, a wedding party. This is the place to be. Okay, so you hear this, viewers? Yes. Do you need a place for your function? You can come to this historic Hampton House. You can rent it out. Yes. It's a museum. It's a wonderful place. In, like I said before, entering the room where Dr. Martin Luther King stayed and seeing the pictures, even going into the cafe. Yes. Where, you know, the, the, all the... The Sonny Liston and Muhammad Ali. Ali. All of them were Wicked there. Yeah, the there I mean, the body. vibe. It's like my mind's like went back to like, what, what would it have been like to have been here during that time? You know, the environment, so the atmosphere. It was, seems so alive just watching the picture, so let alone actually being there. But you can come and visit the historic Hampton House. This is a treasure, as Dr. Pinckney um, stated. Right here in your own backyard, there are times we don't appreciate things we have right there at home. And this is home for those who live in the city of Miami, in the state, in the county. Come and visit the historic Hampton House. You have a treasure right here. Okay, come and don't just travel abroad. I love to travel too, and I love to go see historic places, but we have his history right here, right here, right here in our backyard. That people will become interested yes. and they'll want to see it and that they'll come to see the ha historic Hampton House and become a part of it. Yes, yes, so important. Vital. This is vital. Yes. And make yes. sure you bring the children to the Hampton Please House. Please bring your children to the Hampton House. This is history. This is history. Yes, this is history. I'm glad I know, I'm aware, and I know the history 
that's here in this Hampton house. Thank you. Because had it not been for your uh, your commitment, your diligence, I would not have known about the history here. And Dr. Heiler, I would not know the youngest singer. She sings so beautifully. I want her to sing. But wow, the youngest performer. I mean, did you sing with any of the greats that came through here? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, um, wow. Nancy Wilson. Oh, wow. Um, um, when Tina got through with her show over there, she would come over here and, you know, and invite me to sing with her and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, Count Basie played behind me a little bit, you know. So. Yes, awesome. Thank you. Yes, and I do have a, a, a treat for you because, of course, we have to honor these women. I could not just, you know, have them here without just thanking you for accepting. Um, thank you, Dr. Heiler. Um, Dr. Pingney, you are a shero <laughs> and a star for your restoration of the historic Hampton House. I honor you by presenting you this star. Star Award, it reads... In recognition of outstanding excellence, honoring Dr. Eni Pinkney, I'm gonna get that right, Pinkney, with great appreciation for your commitment and restoring the historic Hampton House from the royal class. And the scripture we stand on is 1 Peter 2, verse 9. So you are a star. Thank you so oh, much you. for being thank a star you. in our life here. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Oh, bless I you. I certainly thank appreciate you. this. Thank you. And I cherish it. And I have a copy of my book. I don't know if you have it yet. No. It is the God class. They're representing the God class there. So a copy of my book. Thank for you. Thank, thank you. you so much. And also, Dr. Heiler, oh, you didn't think I left you out. Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely not. <laughs> Dr. Heiler, you are absolutely here. I have here for you. Dr. Heiler, you are a phenomenal vocalist because I have heard you sing <laughs> and it's amazing. Vocalist with an amazing gift. I honor you with this star for your star performances at the historic Hampton House and yours read honoring an amazing vocalist, Dr. Mary Heiler, for your legendary performances at the historic Hampton House from the Royal Class. Thank you. And I also have a copy of my book for you. Thank you also. I don't know if you have a copy yet, but you have one now. Yes. Okay, it is the God Class. Signed it on that. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> this is for you, Dr. Heiler. Thank you so, yes, so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Women, you are, you are the stars here. <laughs> and thank you so much for your work. Um, this historic Hampton House. It is such an honor again. I cannot get away from that word. It's an honor to have you um, on the Royal Class. It's been a privilege to interview you both together. I know we could be here indefinitely, but we know we have to bring it to an end. So thank you so, so much. I can't say that enough. Viewers, I thank you for joining us today on the Royal Class. As always, I would like to extend, of course, if you do not know or have not received Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Savior, stand up, please read Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 and inbox me and I will direct you further. Um, nothing greater than having a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is, you already know, he is truly the Lord of my life. And I thank you, viewers, for joining us again. And thank the ladies. Um, history here. So much history. Uh, Miss King, if you happen to see this or hear this, now you need to do a movie on Dr. Pinkney and Dr. Heiler together and bring again back the information and the joy that rests in here with the um, historic Hampton House. Thank you again. Blessings. Bye-bye. Thank you.